Um, welcome to this episode of Think Tank Thursday. I am Candy Kelly and I'm filling in for Beth as she is traveling the globe this week. So on Thursdays at Trainertainment, we like to get away from doing and spend a little bit of time thinking. And so I'm so excited to spend that time thinking with today's guest. But first, I have to give a big shout out to Redemption Plus for sponsoring Think Tank Thursdays. Redemption Plus is dedicated to helping their customers run a smooth redemption program by assisting with insight, design, training, and superior redemption merchandise. So if you're in the market for a partner, check them out. Now we get to move on to our guest. So why don't you take a few minutes to tell everyone who you are, what you do, and all of that. Excellent. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is Danny Gruning, and I am the VP of Marketing at CreativeWorks. Our company, we, um, we believe memorable experiences make people happier. So we try to create those powerful emotions and memories with immersive attractions such as laser tag arenas, mini golf courses, virtual reality, esports, and a number of other things. And so as the head of marketing, it's my job to, to manage the company's image and brand, but also, and more importantly, deliver the tools, resources, um, and knowledge that allow our clients to be be able to improve their businesses and their attractions. And so that's kind of the part and the role that I play in our company. Awesome. We love creative works. So today we're going to talk about a very kind of specific topic of leveling up, which I'm pretty curious. So we want to take a, tell us what leveling up is. Yeah. So we got toward the end of 2019 as we were getting closer to IAPA and we, we realized one of the things that we wanted to do so was curious, so. create a, a, a theme, kind of that North Star um, overall theme for the 2020 year that we could use as a rallying call for everything we do internally as a company and everything that we do for our clients. And we landed on the term level up. We kind of launched that idea at IAPA Expo in 2019. And for us, leveling up is, is about the realization that we can't get, whether it's through your, your business or your personal life, we can't just settle for the status quo. Uh, we can't just get too comfortable um, with where we are. We always wanna be pushing um, and going one step further and improving ourselves and improving our businesses especially with how fast the industry and customer demands are changing. We know that in order to keep up with the marketplace um, and in order to keep up with increased competition for our clients, we and our clients need to always be looking for how we can level up our businesses and take things to the next, uh, the next stage, if you will. And so that's kind of informed a lot of our decisions. And throughout the rest of this year, it's going to be a, a term that we use in almost everything that we do. And we also use that internally of how can we level up the, the tools and the resources, the blog posts, the articles, the, the attractions themselves, all the things that we do internally, how can we improve and level, level them up each day and uh, day in and day out. Very cool. So the term level up, what was it inspired by? Um, there wasn't really one specific inspiration where we looked and said, yes, that's what we <laughs> want to do. But the funny thing is, and I know this is a, something that happens in human psychology, um, where, you know, if you have a specific car that you want to buy, you start seeing that car all, all over the roads. Well, after we selected the level up theme, we've noticed it in a lot of different places that uh, so many companies are and, and people and organizations also really latch onto this idea because it's so uh, accessible and, and it can mean so many things to so many different people uh, that I think it's a good rallying call regardless of, of whether you're an individual, a company, a nonprofit or anything in between. Um, I have to be honest that what I think about when you say leveling up and it totally fits in the fact that you guys are in the amusement industry is like gaming and you have to get to that next level and get those next points and level up yourself I go back my brain goes back to Mario Brothers which is very old school but it's what I started with with like video games and all of that so that's what comes to mind 
<laughs> Absolutely. And it's funny, there's a lot of us at Creative Works. At the end of the day, we're a bunch of nerds who get to make really cool things for our clients, all these fun, immersive environments. And so one of the ways that we're nerds is we are gamers. And, you know, there's a group of us at the company who, who play pretty regularly online. Destiny 2 is one of our popular games. And we're always working on leveling up and, and making sure we're maxed out on all that, too. So I uh, very much understand uh, that <laughs> reference. <laughs> awesome. So what are, so we understand that creative works is going through this where you're leveling up, but how can everyday people, owners, operators, you know, use this in their day to day? Yeah. Well, one of the things that comes to mind is I saw recently a, a quote by Jim Rohn. And I think that goes hand in hand with this idea of leveling up and I'm going to read it off my screen so I don't mess it up. Um, <laughs> What you get will never make you happy. Doesn't matter what you get. Who you become, that'll make you very happy or very sad. And I think that just is a good reminder that um, it's, a, it's a reminder about the human need for growth and constant improvement. And, and so for us, whether that uh, takes shape inside your business um, with your professional life or in your personal life anywhere, that's kind of what is that driving force. And so, you know, if we talk about things like uh, an operator's business, how can they level up their business? Well, one of the first very self-serving answers I could say is get a new immersive attraction that we provide. But <laughs> even beyond that, there, there are so many things that they can do. Just a couple could be, you know, maybe enhancing their food and beverage, right? Right now, um, especially with millennials and Gen Z, they're very particular about food. And when we compare the food that's being served today in entertainment centers to the food from even five or seven years ago, it's very different. Um, and most places, a lot of places that, that concession stand snack shack doesn't really quite cut it. You need to be able to provide something more. Maybe leveling up is uh, something like um, Jeremy Hoyam, who helped uh, Jake's Unlimited down in Arizona become the top FEC in the world um, uh, from, from IAPA's Brass Ring Awards, one of the things that they did is they introduced something called, um, it was a signature item on their menu called a unicorn taco. And for those who aren't familiar, you can literally just Google unicorn uh, taco and it will be one of the first things that comes up. And it's basically like this, this um, uh, Sunday, this ice cream Sunday, where the uh, the taco shell itself is made out of um, cotton candy. Cotton candy. It's, it's insane. Like you look at it and you you think either one of two things: either that looks amazing and I want one, or oh my gosh, that looks so gross and I'm going to get a bunch of cavities. But either but regardless, way, regardless, you're talking about, about it. it. Exactly, they're talking about it, and he's had they they had so many. Uh, new stories done about that particular piece. There are people who go to that facility just to order that and then end up staying longer and spending money in other profit centers. So that's a way they can level up their business. It could be renovations of, of guest areas, whether that's you know improving the lobby or bathrooms, things like that, that guests are going to experience on a regular basis. Um, or something that you know I know that Trainer Team it does of maybe getting employee training and helping improving the customer experience from the employee side of things. So there's a you know a free little plug for you, but there are so many different ways that someone could level up their business, and that's just a few examples. It's interesting that you talked about the food presentation. I was just at FEC Summit um, this earlier this week, and one of the breakout sessions talked about how presentation has surpassed even quality as far as like the most important thing not saying you can serve a yucky product and by any means but you need to serve a quality product but you can't just put put a quality product on a plain white plate you've got to think about what that looks like what you're using to serve it on is it basically you need to look at it and say would someone take a picture of this is it instagrammable yes instagrammable is a word that kept coming up 
So those are all great things for, you know, how in your business you can level up. And those are things that, um, you know, Jeremy talked about that unicorn taco. I wish I would known you were talking about it. I have a shirt with the unicorn taco on it uh, that I could have oh, showed everybody. That's oh, amazing. I really um, hope to, to get down to the Phoenix area this year um, to visit a, a couple places, but I want to go to that center and I definitely want to get one of those t-shirts. And again, it's that right there is a revenue generator and also just uh, awareness and, and brand marketing for them. And it was within their means. They watched, they went to a fair, got some ideas, played around within their own site. It wasn't a whole lot of expense or no special equipment or anything. They just looked at what was there and didn't say no to crazy ideas like a taco shell made of cotton candy. And so that I think is real important. Um, I like to say that there's no growth in the comfortable and so when you can comfortably keep serving the same food that you have, or you comfortably keep, you know, in the same circles that you're in or learning about the same things and all that, that you're not actually growing yourself or your business in any way. Yeah. It reminds me of the most dangerous phrase in business, which is, well, that's the way we've always done it. And mm -hmm. if that's the response to any question, if that's the response, it's, well, let's take a look because maybe this is not the right thing you should be doing. How can you grow? How can you change? How can you improve? Um, it, and it's funny when I say change, it reminds me, I've got one more quote I wanted to share from, um, Todd Henry, who's an author of a book, uh, I think it's called the accidental creative. Um, and it goes like this. We like the idea of change, but we resist the idea of changing any noun, whether it's achievement, goal, peace, growth, etc. any noun that you want uh, in your life will be the result of a verb that you consistently do. And I really like that. And I'll come back to that again, I think later on in the conversation when we talk a little bit about using this to create goals. But I think that's, that's something that's really interesting is that uh, we, sometimes we like the idea of change, but doing the actual changing is the hard part. It's definitely the hard part. So I talked a little bit about how people watching this could use this in their business, but you know, there's no growth in your business if you aren't willing to let yourself grow professionally. So what are some ways, and luckily we're in an industry that gives you a plethora of resources for training and, um, you know, conferences and all that, but what are some ways that people can tackle this realistically with all the busyness that we have going on in our day of leveling up their professional life as well? Yeah, and it's one of those things where uh, the, the whole busyness of our professional day is we, and I'm guilty of this too, this is the, the royal we, the general we of all of us, get caught up working in our businesses and getting in that day-to-day -day grind. And it's important, no matter how painful it seems or how many fires are happening in the business, that we need to step back and work on the business and work on ourselves. Because if we don't take that time to step back and do that, those fires are never going to go away. Um, uh, you know, the little things that come up. And so whether it's, you know, I, I'll combine a bit of professional and the personal side of things because a lot of times those can go hand in hand. But the, the easy answer for those could be one of the plethora of um, educational events in our industry across the board, regardless of what kind of facility you are or how big it is or how many employees you have, there is one or more events that have a lot of really helpful and valuable educational pieces that you can learn, excuse me, uh, hiccup there that you can learn from. Uh, outside of that, things that you can do, uh, taking leadership training courses, um, it's one thing to, to focus on uh, building the business and having that experience, but you, if you're an owner or a manager of people, need to learn how to lead people appropriately and get them on board with your message and your beliefs and your culture and get everyone rowing in the same direction so that you can scale your business. I think a really great example of that would be uh, Michael Browning from uh, Urban Air Adventure Park. He's focused a lot in the last couple of years on culture and leadership and putting things into place to allow everyone who works at the company to improve their skill set and grow. And, and as we um, learn how to become leaders ourselves, we can help other people level up regardless of what position they're in. Um, other ways that people could level up professionally, personally, um, I've got a couple of notes here that I'm referencing. I'm not trying mm -hmm. to look weird. You're good. Um, uh, enhancing your personal network, 
meeting with other people at these kinds of events, whether it's an industry related one or local events for small business owners in your community and just growing that network and understanding the, the challenges that other business owners are facing and the ways that they've overcome them could spark a really great idea for you as well. Um, and other things like volunteering your time or your money. Um, if that's something that contribution is important to you, that's a way that you can personally get fulfilled and, and have growth in your life by volunteering your time um, and resources to others, whether it be an individual or an organization. Um, and then things like, as much as I hate the word self-help, it's generally the easiest word to describe, conferences. Uh, personal growth conferences. I think an example of that could be anything from someone like Tony Robbins, Unleash the Power Within. That's all about how to to overcome personal um, uh, limiting beliefs and barriers and, and get further in your life than you ever thought you could. It's um, interesting that you mentioned expanding your network. Um, you know, there's a recent book Ken Coleman wrote called The Proximity Principle. And it's like, if you basically he talks about if you want to know something or if you want to get into a certain industry or if you want to improve yourself in some way, surround yourselves with a couple of people that do that thing really, really well. And you will can't help but to get better at it because you're surrounding yourself with resources and people you can talk to and mentors that allow you to grow in that way. Absolutely. The, the term that uh, Tony Robbins uses is proximity is power. When Very you're nice. close to those people, um, the, the, the amount of power that you can pull from them and learn from them is amazing. Um, it is very so true even in in hiring back in my days in operations like you found somebody and you hired people who were like them like their friends and stuff they'd be like workers so if you could find really good people um, you tend to surround yourself with people who are wanting to improve themselves or not wanting to improve themselves. Absolutely. As a quick random aside, something I just thought about, I, I'm, you probably already trained on this, but it's something that I heard recently that I really liked, is when you're looking for new candidates to, to bring in uh, to work at, at a facility, mm -hmm. going to your, your, um, your star employees, your, your A players, right, and asking them, who do you know who's better than you? Instead of just who they know, like who's a good friend that you think would be a good fit, who do you know that's better than you? And, bring those, and that gets them in a very different mindset of, of being able to find their peers um, and bring them in to potentially, you know, improve your, your guest experience with better employees. Oh, yeah, that is super cool. That's a good question to ask. So I think we've covered, let me think, we've covered how you can do this in business. We've covered a little bit about professional, which bled a little bit into the personal. Are there any other notes about how to add this to your personal that you would like to touch on? Um, I mean, there, there are so many ways. Uh, one thing that I've been thinking about a lot recently um, that, that is related to level up is we tend to be bad. We as humans are bad at celebrating wins. Whenever, whether it's big or small, when something good happens in our life or in our business, we're like, yay, and then we move on to the next thing. We're just so focused, and that's something that can sometimes happen when we're caught up in, or we're trying to level up, is we can't lose sight of how far we have come. And so one of the things that I focus on every week, in addition to this, is looking back at the previous week and saying, what are some of my wins from this week? It doesn't matter how small it was, it doesn't matter how big it was, I need to be able to find wins from every single week even on a day, if you're gonna look back at a day, if it was a bad day, if things just didn't go well, there's always something that you can celebrate as a win. And I think doing that allows us to appreciate the journey of leveling up a lot more. I have to admit, I sometimes am guilty of that because I just see life as life and you just keep dragging along. And so to take the time to do that is uh, not a strength of mine. I will normally <laughs> admit here. It's um, easier said than done, that's for sure. Yeah, that's definitely true. So I hear that you kind of have a challenge for people and what you would like to see them do after listening to this. Yes. So 
I've gone over a couple examples of what level up could mean to a person in their business or professional and personal life. But uh, there are limitless things that level up could mean to somebody. And so if you're listening to this, my challenge would be after this call, don't get right back into what you were doing. Don't start answering emails. Don't get on the phone. Take 10 to 15 minutes and just start writing out some notes of what does level up mean to you in 2020. Where are the areas in your business or your, your career or your life that you want to level up um, and, and take notes on that? And I think that's, that, that alone is already very powerful to be able to, to put into words, not just think about, but literally write down. There's more power in that, writing down what those things are. And then in addition is taking those, and we can talk about this a little bit too, and figuring out how to turn that into a, an achievable goal. So it's not just thinking about the idea and then it's not just writing down the idea, but it's turning that into an actionable set of plans of what you're going to do to get to that point. Okay. Um, and when we're talking about goals, we're not talking about like new year's resolutions. We're talking about real things. <laughs> Correct. I, I, the resolutions are the thing that everyone jokes about of like, Oh, I started this resolution on January 3rd. I broke it. And it's just, um, I think, one of the, 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 the pieces of resolutions that makes it so failure prone is that the scale of time is for a full year and for certain goals, that's too long because we can easily, if we want to accomplish something by the end of 12 months from now, it's easy for us to consciously or subconsciously put it off. Well, I'll have more time to do that later. I'll have more time to do that later. And then we get into October, November, and we go, oh, I haven't made any progress. This is going to be impossible now. And so one of the things that um, someone I know had challenged me with for this year is don't think about goals in terms of 12 months. Think about a goal in terms of 12 weeks. Shrink down that timeline to about three months because it already makes it much more immediate. Uh, wasting a week on a three month time scale is a lot more than wasting a week on a year time scale. Um, and so that makes it more immediate, more um, achievable from a psychological standpoint and allows you to say, okay, what are the actual steps that I need to take every day and every week between now and 12 weeks from now to hit that goal? And I think that's where the quote that from Todd Henry comes into play. It's not just about setting that goal and an action plan, it's about being consistent with it. Consistency is so key with anything in life, especially if we're trying to accomplish some goal. Um, if you do that on a regular basis, daily, weekly, whatever that is, it's going to be a lot easier to get there in 12 weeks. You know, at Trainer Entertainment, we practice the EOS model. And so that breaks down those 12 weeks goals and calls them rocks. And that's also what we train in our business coaching. And so, yes, we have a vision for where we want to be in one year and in three years and even in 10 years. But those are just like, it's just the guiding map, whatever. Yeah. What we do in every 12 weeks is what gets us there and are the like checkpoints to make sure we're still in line with that as well. Absolutely. So, um, you know, and also like, you can start today, like this, I have to wait till next quarter or I have to wait. It's either like day one or one day. We all know what, that we want to grow our business. We want to grow ourselves and all of that, but we are, it's really easy for us just to put that off and say, well, I'll start that when, you know, and we, you, you know, say a time or whatever, but it's like, you can start at any time. You can start at a 2.23 on a Thursday afternoon, Eastern time, if you want. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I've already mentioned Tony Robbins a couple times. I'm going to pull one more quote from him because I love this one. Uh, when would now be a good time? <laughs> That's when a good one. When would now be a good time? Because we think about this in the future. Well, I'll start tomorrow or next week. It's, no, start now. What is, what is a massive action you can take right now or an action to get that ball rolling and the momentum moving to get to that goal, that rock, that piece that puts you on the trajectory of your, your long-term vision, your North Star, if you will. Yeah, I would also challenge everyone to give themselves a little bit of grace. We are never done. Like after we hit one goal, another goal comes and another goal comes and we are not gonna perfectly know how to get there all the time. And so you're gonna fail sometimes, you're gonna make some missteps at times, 
that's not what's important. Um, I asked my daughter all the time when she something happens um, at school and she didn't do a good grade. Or my, I'm always like, so what'd you learn from it? What do we have to do now to make sure that it's better in the future? Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, so we are never done. Fell forward. There's a lot of people who say that. Fell forward. All right. Um, let me, I'm going through all of the things that we said we were talking about today. Is there anything that I missed from the list for us to touch base on? No, I think through at this point, we're at kind of the closing section. But I think if I look at all of my notes that I, I think we hit all those things, which is great. And we were on time. Awesome. And I didn't, I didn't talk too much. <laughs> all right. Well, as I warned you, we like to end Think Tank with a signature question. There's a Think Tank signature question. And the question is, what do you do to grow yourself and others and or others? Yeah. So I think that there's this answer involves a lot of different things for me. Um, I'm, I'm big into reading um, and whether that is is personal development habit growth books or if it's related to business. I, I'm constantly every day reading a little bit to learn a little bit more. Um, I also listen to a lot of audiobooks and podcasts that, um, uh, you know, and most of the, the, the audiobooks and podcasts I do are not fictional related. It's about something mm -hmm. tangible that I can take away and improve from. Um, you know, I'm in a weekly mastermind group where there's a group of us who get together and have a, a main coach where we are, hold each other accountable. We grow every week. We understand, uh, learn new lessons. And I walk away from that, that call every single week with something that I took away that is say, wow, that's really valuable because these people are very, very smart. Um, and I do a lot of these things. And I think that as I learn these things through books and podcasts and, and other various mediums, it allows me to share these uh, skill sets and knowledge with those around me. And that's, that's how I try to help other people grow as well, whether it's the, uh, some of the other people at my company, the people who work for me, or even any of our clients of what can we do and, and create and share that will allow them to learn from that as well and grow their own business. Shout out to you. I'm an avid podcast listener too. Um, from everything from finance to health to how to make myself a better leader to how to sell better, but there's a plethora of choices out there. Um, that's the thing, it's so easy to grow now too. Like you can just choose a topic. You can know zero, have zero knowledge about that topic right now and say, I'm gonna start reading about it and listening about it. And the more you hear the same words, the more you hear the same theories, the same concepts, it will become a part of you if you're interested enough into learning about it. Yeah, and it's one thing uh, it, that I find interesting is adults, we're really bad at being um, novices at something. We, feel, we have this tendency to think, well, we're adults, I can't be really bad at something. And if I try something I'm really bad at, I'm just gonna quit because it's embarrassing. Um, but kids don't have that issue. Everything's new to them. And so they're constantly absorbing and trying new things. And I think sometimes adults get in their own way. One of the things that I'm learning right now, I've always wanted to know, and I'm at a very, very beginner level, but I'm learning how to play chess. I've always wanted to, to figure it out. And I'm very much at those beginning levels of if I played uh, a 10 year old who's been playing for a little while, <laughs> I would lose. I know I would, but it doesn't matter. I'm trying to, to, to push myself out of my comfort zone um, and learn things from a, a strategy um, and kind of keep my brain healthy. Yeah, I used to know how to play chess. I'm not so sure I would still know how to do that. So <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time today. I am sure you've piqued interest from a lot of people. So if they, where can they find you, learn more, connect with you? Um, I think there are maybe some events that are coming up for you guys. Absolutely. So for our company, uh, the easiest way to find out more about us is to go to our website. It is www.thewowefect.com. Dot com. Um, and we've had that website ever since uh, Jeff Schilling founded the company back in 1997. And we've always been about delivering the wow effect. Um, and so that's a great way to learn more about us. Me personally, if you want to connect, I think the easiest place is to search for my name on LinkedIn. I'm probably the only Danny Gruding on there. It's not a very common last name. So it'll be pretty easy to find me on there as well. Um, and then you did mention uh, events. And so a bit of a, a self plug that's a self-serving for just a moment. We do have an event that we host three times a year. 
Uh, it's called Amusement 360. It's a program that's all about uh, delivering the, the tools and knowledge to help operators either open their first facility or improve their operations, maximize profits, and minimize costly mistakes. And it's uh, February 18th through 20th is the next one that's coming up. And we're going to have a really great turnout, lots of amazing guest speakers and experts and panel discussions, site visits, and a, and a whole lot more. Trainer Entertainment will be there. Absolutely will. You're a, a, an amazing supporter of that event. And we'll have uh, Laura O'Neill will be doing a presentation about how to grow your corporate and group sales. So you'll specifically be represented. So we're really excited about the one coming up in a couple of weeks. Very, very nice. Well, again, thank you for your time and thank you to everyone else for spending your time on this Thursday with us. I can't leave without thanking Redemption Plus again for their sponsorship. If there's anyone out there who has an idea for Think Tank, wants to be a guest on Think Tank, we're very welcoming. You can come and be a guest. We'll let you talk. Or wants to sponsor, you can email us at thinktankthursdays at trainertainment.net. And also be sure to check out the details of our upcoming business coaching event, event which happens after Amusement 360 in March of this year. Um, you can check out all of the details for that on our website, trainertainment.net. And so thanks everyone. And uh, we will see you next week. Thanks, Candy. I appreciate it.